welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Valer, and this week I have something very cool to share with you. I have been playing with deco foil, and as if gold leaf, metallic leaf, copper leaf, bronze wasn't enough, now we have kicked it up a notch with deco foil, which is a super shiny transferable foil that comes in all kinds of colors with variations in the color with ombres in the color with striations in the color it's something really cool that i've actually never played with before so we're going to be experimenting a little bit together i'm going to show you how i apply it and then i'm going to talk about how i would use it in my art so I am back in California after three weeks in Tuscany and I am um, the re-entry uh, process has gone relatively smoothly. I think I'm over my jet lag and I'm ready to again share with you what's going on in my studio. So if you've got a few minutes, let's go check it out. So for today's a video I decided to play with some of this deco foil um, which is a new product to me I mean I love um, gold leaf and shiny sparkly stuff I love glitter and so I figured why not try this deco foil and um, it is super shiny it comes in transfer sheets like this one is called green sketch and you can see that it's got all these like scratchy, scritchy marks in it. It has like a grassy sort of feeling. And then there's a couple foils that have, um, oh, these are hard to open. There's, this one is called um, Lapis Watercolor and it has like variation, a sort of a watercolory blue, yellow feel. Um, and that's super cool. It's super shiny and there's one, two, three, four, five sheets in the tube. Um, I don't know what the measurement is on this, but there's five sheets in each tube. So this is the, uh, the lapis watercolor. Um, the next one that I thought was cool is this one is the, um, summer rainbow. This is kind of a neat ombre effect with some beautiful warm colors in stripes. That does really remind you of the beach. Um, and then the last one I have, this one is called uh, Glass Slipper. So this is kind of a cool um, teal and everybody loves teal sort of a teal blue color with a, and it re, is reflecting, it's a solid teal blue, but it is reflecting color from the room around it, which is kind of cool. It's so reflective, it's gonna pick up colors around it. So I'm going to use the foil with stencils. So I want to be able to use a medium to glue it down that has some thickness and some body to it that will hold the pattern of the stencil. So let's pull one of these out. This is a little bit different. Well, I guess it's a pretty much the same feel as that. And you can see a little better here, the, the kind of the cool texture on that. So I love these for the variation of color and the texture on them, which is a lot of fun. So I'm using for the medium, Tacky When Dry Gel Medium by the Crafters Workshop. This is nice because it is thick and it will hold shape and form. Uh, you can see that it's a nice thick gel and it will spread through a stencil or spread around with a paintbrush or with your fingers or a Q-tip. You can make a pattern with it. It will hold the pattern and it will dry dimensional. So you can apply it really thick and have a raised up dimensional um, foil pattern. I'm spreading it with the palette knife in... Um, in, in, when I want to get in real tight, particular, more exact applications. But I also like using this Princeton Catalyst wedge when I'm scraping it uh, through the stencil in a large area because it gives me a nice flat, smooth surface and I can get it smoothed out a lot easier with this wide wedge um, than with the um, palette knife. So they both have their application depending on what you're doing. Um, oh, and by the way, uh, the, uh, all of the supplies that I'm using will be listed below the video. Okay. So, um, 
Yeah, also using one of uh, my stencils, uh, several of my stencils, and this one, the name is escaping me. I will um, put it on the video uh, as soon as I figure it out. But I thought this would be a good one because this is a mask and it has heavy coverage. So the, um, so the glue will go down and form polka dots and it will leave the background of my paper showing in these circle patterns. So uh, speaking of my paper, what are we going to use this foil on? Well, I have a whole bunch of tags that I painted in Sedona with Barb from Joggles and they're uh, gel printed actually. And they're brown craft tags and um, with beautiful dark, colors to begin with. There are black tags um, that we gel printed. There's, uh, we've made some white ones. Um, so it's, I have a whole bunch of these tags that I have been gel printed and I really love the ones on the brown craft or the black. So uh, a video for this, uh, I'm gonna link in your upper right hand corner, the video um, of us creating these tags. Um, on the gel plate. So I thought I would add another layer to them by adding the uh, dimensional foil. So I have a stack of tags that I have already prepared so I can show you the, um, I can do a little Julia Child. I'll show you how to put this in. We'll put it in the left hand oven and we'll pull out of the right hand oven, a whole bunch of it already cooked, right? Um, so I'm going to, I'm gonna put this uh, tag uh, down on the desk. I'm working on my non-stick craft mat surface, so it doesn't matter if I get the glue um, over onto the surface. It's going to wipe off um, no problem. Um, and I'm going to put this... Now, you could tape this down if you're afraid of it moving, um, but I'm I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to give it a little edge so I can see the edge of this. Maybe I'll go with that side. No, I think I'll go with this side. And I'll do the edge so I get a fun edge out here with the uh, foil. Okay, so for this application, I am going to use the wedge because I'm going to scrape across a large area. And that way I can get it big and wide and smooth. So I'm going to take the, the gel medium out of the um, cup. And I'm just going to put it on the edge of the wedge. And then I'm going to hold it and scrape it through. And it takes a little practice to apply it sort of evenly. And then you have to determine how thick or how thin you want it. Do you want it to be very dimensional and raised up or do you just want it to be low dimension? Um, so the thicker you apply it, of course, the longer you have to wait for it to dry. But I like it kind of thick because, whoops, I think it gives it a lot of visual interest. So uh, to have it raised up. So I'm going to apply a little bit more down this end. And I'm just going to go right over the edges of this because honestly, my, my desktop is not a problem like that. So I don't feel like I need to stay in the middle. And that'll help me get um, more even coverage by going right off the edges. So you could, if you don't have this uh, craft mat, you could do it on a sheet of palette paper so that you can go right off the edges. And the idea is to get it as even and smooth application as you can. So you can see I'm missing a spot there. So I'll pull the wedge in from a couple of different directions and then I'll smooth it. And I think I need a little bit more right in this side. And I know I'm putting out a lot of this, but I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna clean it up and put it back in the container. Uh, the other nice thing about the uh, wedge is you get less um, gel on the surface of your stencil. You can sort of see that it's not building up as much on the surface of the stencil. So a little less to clean. And I'm just sort of putting that back towards the tip of this tool. And I think that's pretty good. I'm a little thin right on this edge. I know I'm being a little bit of a perfectionist, but I do wanna make sure that I have an even thickness, as even as I can get it. So here we go. I'll bring a little in here. There. 
Now, what I'm going to do is I have a basin of warm soapy water off to the side, a dish basin a dish basin of warm soapy water. So I'm gonna lift this stencil now. And there's my glue pattern. I'm gonna throw this in the water. I'm gonna carefully, now I have an area here where it's seeped under, so I'm gonna fix that with a Q-tip, but I've got time for that. So I'm gonna carefully move that out of the way. I'm gonna take my wedge and I'm gonna scrape up, scoop up all the excess that we went over the page with and then I'm going to just take it and put it back in the container. So that is another nice thing about this wedge and the wedge is silicone. So it will, uh, the product will wash right off of it. But again, I'm gonna throw that in the basin of warm soapy water. I'm gonna throw the palette knife in there because this stuff dries sticky, sticky, sticky. So you don't want it to dry before you get to it. Um, and then I'm gonna take a damp towel and just wipe, save all your room keys when you go hoteling, because this is how I get the dried stuff off and then wipe. And then you're down to perfectly clean and you can save this for another application. This will take varnish and paint and whatever else off the table. Okay, so um, we have a little area here where the uh, medium got under the stencil. So I'm just gonna take a Q-tip and Bring that circle back. I'll get it off the best I can. The Q-tip works nicely because the cotton really absorbs the glue. And then once you get it off, you can dampen the Q-tip with a little water and get the last of it. Okay, so gonna let that dry and you can see that it goes on white when it's dry it will be clear okay so when it's clear it's gonna be very sticky and tacky and that's when you know that it's ready to go so we're gonna set this aside and I've got several more tags that I have applied the medium with um, now this one is my mask uh, called railroad stacks so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the colored side that you want you know to show is going to be up so you're going to use the back side whoa don't get it stuck prematurely and then i'm gonna instead of smacking it dab right in the middle of this sheet you know give yourself some leftover to use another time so i'm going to put it sort of down in the lower corner and then the idea is to burnish it on there so either with your fingers or the brayer and i'm doing it a second time because if I still feel tackiness there, I'm gonna get in there and apply more of the foil. So there, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? It's so super shiny and such a fun color. So there's the first one, that's Railroad Stacked and it's on a gel printed craft tag from Joggles. So the next one, let's try, here's a black, tag with gel printing that I added um, the tacky when, when um, what are we using? Tacky when dry gel medium um, on the black tag with some gel printing. And I added this with my uh, stencil called racing spots. So let's, let's, let's try this one. So again, I'm going to go in that lower corner. This is my speedball six inch brayer. So you can also use your fingertips um, or a wooden spoon or some other tools uh, just to make sure you're getting good pressure. So let's pull that. Oh, that is lovely. And look at that. Wow. Oh my goodness. I love this stuff. Look at that. The watercolory variated foil. That is beautiful. Now that's something that you don't get with regular gold leaf is this variegation. Now, as much as I love that solid purple, I really like the variation in this one, which means I'm definitely going to like the variation in the summery one as well. This one is the Peacock Doodle stencil. I think it's got some pink and purple. It might be pretty with the summer on it. So let's do that. Ooh, now that really stuck well. Look at that. Wow. That is a lot of fun. 
Here's one with a lot of purple. And this is my um, Rose Matter stencil. Look at that. That's a beautiful pattern. And that has got the glass slipper. It does seem to have a little bit of a second color in it, but subtle. Very subtle. I really like that. Look at how beautiful that is against the dark purple and the brown craft on this tag stock. Really nice. And what I also like about this tag stock is it's sturdy. And so it'll hold up to the gel printing and the foiling. And it'll even go through the mail as a postcard um, by itself. Or you can put it in an envelope. I really like that with the Rose Matter stencil. So next up is um, a fiddly fern. You can see that's one. I took one section of the fiddly fern stencil. And I think for this one, we're gonna go green, even though it's on purple and blue. That is a lot of fun. Look at that. Wow. One element, like one fiddly fern. And that is the green with sort of the grassy kind of striations and lines in it. And lastly, I have this one that has um, a climped spiral stencil print on it. And then I've got the climped triangles uh, stencil with the tacky when dry gel medium. And I think I'm going to go again with the warm sort of summer paper on this one because I think it goes well with these colors. How beautiful is that? Wow, just so shiny. This is just an effect that you can't get with gold leaf. This is a lot of fun and a lot of color. So the next question that you're going to ask me, I'm sure, is, okay, these are great postcards, cards, tags, um, art journal, um, pages you could use them in. You could also use them for place cards for the holidays coming up. If you want to do little table place cards for who's sitting where at Thanksgiving, it's right around the corner. Um, all of that, um, uh, scrapbooking, crafting, uh, prayer flags, all kinds of uses for these tags with the uh, gel printing and the foil. But you may also ask me, how would I use this in my art? So the next step is I'm going to apply this to the background of a mixed media piece. So this foil is so much fun and it is the combination of it with the Tacky Wind Dry Gel Medium that allows us to create these awesome patterns with it through the stencils. But I also want to tell you that you can apply it with a brush and make brush marks. You can apply it with a stamp. Um, you can stamp it. You can do a lot of different things with it uh, because it is a thick gel medium that holds its form and holds peaks. Um, so you can get really creative with how you apply it. Today I'm just using stencils, but you can get really creative with how you apply this medium, let it dry, and then attach the foil to it. And it will also work with metallic leaf. So if you are not a fan of the deco foil for some strange reason, and you want to use the traditional um, Simple Leaf by Mona Lisa, it will work with that as well. Okay, so it took a while, but the um, adhesive that uh, seems to have dried and it's um, it's in the background in ways that I hope will look good. Um, I feel like this is another one of those things where I'm playing and messing around with something different and you never know what's gonna happen. I'm definitely gonna do this again um, because I really, really, really like the effect. I mean, you can see that it's not only the metallic, but the, the texture of it, um, it's raised up because of this gel medium. So it's got a real neat look. So let's now apply this in here and then I'm gonna apply the purple in there. So we're gonna start with it like this and get my trusty brayer. So let's see what we've got. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Look at that. This is just crazy cool, isn't it? I mean, I love simple gold leaf, but this is just taking it all to another level. Let's 
if we can get this up here. So over here, we've got that um, area that I wanted to be a little bit more subtle. So the, the um, foil that I'm putting on that one is going to be the purple. And it's just going to be slightly different tone than the paint. So unlike this high contrast, this should be a lower contrast. So let's see what we get. So that starts down here. Ooh, oh my goodness. Uh, metallic on paint. Wow, look at that. Really liking where this is headed. Um, this is an example of how I would use the uh, deco foil in my work. So um, as much as I, I am super happy about these um, tags and the effect uh, that, the, that I can mail these or use them in an art journal or all kinds of other things, these have their own application. I wanted to show you how I would use this product in my mixed media artwork. So there you have it. Um, just turn it this way so you can see that lovely deco foil effect. And um, thank you for being here. Happy Friday. Um, the products are all listed below the video. And so I want to thank you for being here with me. Thank you for indulging me. Thank you for allowing me to experiment and play and have fun and learn new things with this deco foil. And um, I want you to know that I will link the video for the tags, how we painted them and the other video that is escaping me right now. I think there's two videos you may be interested in with regards to this um, and I will link them below as well as all the products and once again thank you for being here and if you would like to consider joining me on Patreon it is a month-to-month -month subscription and that information is also linked in uh, the box below as well so all the links you could possibly want are down below the video thanks for being here happy Friday and I'll see you right here next week